Charles, week three of the preseason. We're getting there. Opening night on the horizon. Here the match. video game even came out on Tuesday so you know we're close but this is the week you use as your dress rehearsal isn't it it is you go over everything as you would on opening day when it actually counts they'll regulate how much the starters play but this is probably the game they play the most in the preseason and don't forget after this game the rosters get pared down to 75 guys on the return here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line so here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinal, Teddy Bridgewater. To me, the best part of Teddy Bridgewater's game is his decision-making. Very smart, loves to watch the game, loves to analyze it, and he does it so well, he takes care of the football and keeps his team in good spots. Flag out right away, and I believe our day will begin with a first and 15. False start, offense. Still first down. throw Bridgewater over the middle here to Rudolph he'll wind up getting 11 on that one and it's a second down when you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one completed pass play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground First carry now for Adrian Peterson. Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? How did he stay on his feet? A big play there out of the running game. 37 yards. If you're an Adrian Peterson fan, that's the sign that you want to see right there on the other end. They got to learn to get him down, or this could be a long one. And it's also the sign that his team wanted to see. Him making that type of a run having a force and an impact on the game that early, that really demoralizes the defense because they realize it could be a long game trying to get him on the ground. They run again on first down, Peterson. And he went backwards. 
He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Every now and then I scratch my head when I see the draw play called, especially after a great run the previous play. Keep attacking. Sometimes the draw play develops slowly, and that allows the defense to react. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Second down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Jarius right that time. And it'll be a third and about 13. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was at the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. Offense working with a third and 13 still left. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. And the play clock becoming an issue, so Mike Zimmer's forced to call a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Well, they've gone backwards so far in this series. Third and 13. fullback the one he was looking for and that's going to bring up a fourth down now Blair Walsh for the Viking field goal it'll come from the right hash it's a 47 yard attempt and there's a flag on the play and that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good, but there is a flag down. He might get another shot at this. So the flag is for roughing the kicker a big 15-yard penalty. And I'm not sure that was the time to go all out after the kicker. Plenty of time left in this game. So here we go, first and ten now. Following the penalty, it's Peterson. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So often you hear defensive coaches talk about we need all 11 on every play in order to be a good run-stopping unit. And sometimes it starts to sound a little cliche. But did you see the free safety on that play? Knifing through and running down the ball carrier. A huge, huge play. And when you have a free safety who can run like that, you've got to turn him loose. A second down throw for Bridgewater. Wright's got it. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. And we'll 
we'll take a look quickly at the San Diego defense. I've always loved Brandon Meebane. From the time I watched him play in college through many, many productive years in the NFL, one of the best defensive tackles in the game. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Let's go. Way 90. Way 90. Two Jets. Two Jets. Two Jets. Two Jets. On third down, Bridgewater. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Call it a pickup of 7, and that'll bring up 4th down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. So off is Bridgewater on the kicker. Blair Walsh on 4th down. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that one. Their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field. And that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback out of NC State. It's Phillip Rivers. I'm actually old enough to remember him hitting the league, and so many people are talking about his throwing motion at the time. A little bit unorthodox. No one talks about it anymore except in admiration. The ball gets to the target really well and usually with big production. now to throw on first down and his first pass is incomplete Keenan Allen the intended receiver and it'll be second and ten this offensive unit often they rely on the sure-handed Antonio Gates we know all about his basketball background but his football acumen one of the best tight ends in the league So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now the first carry for Brandon Oliver. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. He lost four there, and it's third down. Well, the person carrying the ball is always the easy target when things aren't going so well. But I think it's a combination with the Chargers. They've got to get the offensive line going in order to improve those numbers from last year. They weren't very good running it, partner. No, they were bottom of the AFC, second to last in the entire NFL. Rivers. And a catch made by Dontrell Inman. And down he'll go at the 25. 13 yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Drew Kayser now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. 
And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And this one will be down by a member of the kicking team at about the 40-yard line. The Chargers defense now getting set and taking the field. And they did well down near the goal line last time, forcing him to settle for a short field goal. And in today's day and age, settling for a field goal of that distance three, is amazing. You can get three points now, or it's going to give you only one point for the extra point, which would be a little bit longer. But they have to feel fantastic about only giving up three in that situation. It could have been so much worse. Yeah, it could have. Now can they carry that over? Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Second down, Bridgewater. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Brandon Meebane never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. The Chargers trot out their dime package, expecting a throw on third down. Bridgewater from the gun on third down. He's going to rifle one, trying for right, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Most third and long, and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively. But this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag. They're going to keep chucking it. And this time, it results in an interception. So out come the Chargers. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out in a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves Jack that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. And a look at the Vikings' defensive unit. Anthony Barr almost defies description at times. He's built like a defensive end, but he plays outside linebacker and does it quite well. Second down following the run. They go again with Oliver. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. From the gun, Rivers. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? You no, know, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Fresh set of downs here. On the run, a 
it's Oliver. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. See if they stay on the ground for second down. One receiver left, that's Allen. Rivers now on second down. And this is complete, it's Allen. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A nice little completion there by Phillip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. down and goal to go from the seventh. They run. It's Oliver. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Brandon Oliver, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Chargers have taken a first quarter lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. To the touchdown he'll kick this one away now it's Patterson oh he shifts past him and not a bad return here he gets it out to the 25 yard line now the Minnesota offense set to take over again and following the interception just any interception are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no you just throw that out the window I think you are I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go ah totally didn't affect me let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again you're going to take care of it but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all still want to attack we'll see how they attack them here they start the drive with Peterson. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? Second down throw for Bridgewater. And Rudolph has it left side. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. And they've got an extra defensive back out there now on third and 13. Third and long for Bridgewater. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Well, the advantage has certainly shifted to the defense as we began that third down play. And they found a way to foil it and pick up a first down. Third time's a charm, right? Two incompletions. Had to have it on third, and they got it. Yeah, they stuck with it, weren't daunted at all, and picked it up. First 
first and ten, Bridgewater. It's caught, left side, Bolden. A big play there on the catch and run. 51 yards. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody has that ability, they want them on their team. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. down here's a run with Peterson and they go the wrong way on this one losing yardage back at the 12 and frankly Brandon we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position a lot of these guys in college they were safeties they moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses and now we're seeing it in the NFL those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield similar to that one Bridgewater now on second, and down he goes. The pressure getting to Bridgewater. The rookie from Ohio State, Joey Bosa, in there to bring him down, and it'll be a play to remember for that young man, the first sack of his NFL career. And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Bridgewater from the gun on third down. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dante Whitner. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they're throwing an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. He was a second-round pick. Many scouts thought he could have gone higher than that. And I was one of them. Even though I don't scout for any particular team, I had a first-round grade on him. And frankly, I'm surprised he lasted to the second round. They got a steal with this player. And you take a look at this draft class from a season ago. Really, it grades out as a pretty darn good class. So you have to give a lot of credit to the entire scouting organization. General manager, personnel department, college scouts. It all came together. They evaluated it very well. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked up by Captain Mullerland. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. A chance for us to look at this Chargers defense again. They've certainly got something to build off of. They had the interception last time out. And now they have to just make sure they're cognizant of not trying too hard for interceptions. Once you get one, it makes you a little more antsy to try and get another one. Now they got to be careful of double moves, different things like that against them. But they like the momentum that they've begun to build. And we'll see if they can keep that momentum going. Following the interception, here's Bridgewater. And the reception made over the middle. This is Bolden. Give them 13 on the pick up there. And the Vikings are going to have it now first and goal. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone.
first and goal. They'll look to smash it in. Maybe a quarterback sneak here. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Did your high school have that same push them back, push them back cheer? I was a kicker. Well, it's, it certainly worked. Didn't matter whether we were kickers or not. That one worked, didn't it? They pushed him back at his last snap of the ball, and boy, they created a nice play for themselves. Would they lose three on that yeah, one? Yeah, from the one back to the four. Four. It's second and goal. They try again with Peterson. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. Water. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter, picked off by Dante Wittner. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And as a defender, if you come up with two interceptions in a game, that's pretty rare in the NFL. You might see one guy a weekend do that, but to have two in the first quarter, that's something you don't see all that often. I have a feeling they'll think twice about throwing in his direction too often. And now San Diego getting set to go. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Well, so they just got the football on an interception. They almost gave it right back the same way. And you know, when you look over to the bench after that type of a play, number one is pure relief. Didn't give it up. But it's not the coach you're worried about yelling at you. It's those guys on defense who just intercepted the pass who want to break over there. Hey, take care of the football, man. Here's a carry for Oliver. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. 6-3, that's our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a the football. They've got a third down and five to start things out. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And incomplete here on third down. He was looking for his tight end, Hunter Henry. And that's going to make it fourth down. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. Oh. 
Here's Drew Kayser now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Three punts in NFL history have gone for 90 yards or more. You just witnessed one. It's number four. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about Hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And the grab made by the tight end Pruitt. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sean Lesmore never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. And the O-line will have to do a better job protecting here on third down after that sack. Here's Hill. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him 16 yards on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. <laughs> and that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain. Still a ways to go, though. Taken at about the 36. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. And now San Diego getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll come out in the pistol. All right, here we go. Blue Blue Detroit! Detroit! Here's the backup now, the former Badger, Melvin Gordon. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Michael Griffin in on the tackle. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he takes it all the way down to the three. It's a big one there for the Chargers. 53 yards. 
Now, he may not be the top guy in the league, but he shows right there, and we know it. He's got the big playability. And he's showing it to us right now because he's letting the league know he's going to be there when the regular season begins. He uses preseason as not just an audition, but preparation. He's ready to play. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. halfway there down to the one yard line. They'll get two out of that run and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Good first step there defensively but they're still knocking on the doorstep so maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches just say son if you could darn near lay down near the end zone and get in <laughs> give me my best power running play with my best back right now. They come out here in the eye. Second and goal from the one. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there. And it's third down. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists. And if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think the second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. From back at the three now, this is third and goal. Defense brings him in, and he's in across the chalk. Touchdown, San Diego. Melvin Gordon, his second touchdown on the season, and the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. And that moment we just saw, always so special for any rookie, the first touchdown of his career. And there's nothing like anticipation, is there? You know he's been dreaming about it, thinking about it. It's been a part of every bit of his being. And finally, it gets done. He's got to feel great right now. Lambeau on for the extra point. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. To the touchdown he'll kick this one away fairly short kick taken at the 14 here and they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30 and now out comes minnesota and with this deficit you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away you know what i would tell my offense right here the punter doesn't exist guys he doesn't even exist. He's not. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and here give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if somebody has got to be casualties at times, we're trying to win a game. A nice carry there of 15 yards. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it doesn't? so many different ways in this case you got a back who's quick and shifty can make moves make people miss but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down that's some of the benefits of that speed not just outrunning people in the secondary that led to a really nice game
They come up in an offset eye. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second-guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Time running out here on the play clock. Now the play clock hits zero here, and we're going to get a delay. Delay of game, offense. Still third down. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. I got it. Now let's go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. I like what they were thinking on defense. Just guard the first down sticks. Don't let anyone pass that. Didn't matter whether they threw it or ran it. They just ended up rallying to the football in the running play and stopped them short of a first down. Fielded at the 20. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. And now San Diego getting set to go. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of. But so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, Three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that Woody 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 it on the ground. Green, 39! <laughs> they'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Melvin Gordon's rookie year was a far cry from his last season at Wisconsin, wasn't it? Boy, it was. Yeah, we got the numbers right here. Three and a half yards per carry, 641 yards, no touchdown. Well, I think his team is really looking to do things to help him break out and get back to that Wisconsin form in 2016. One, out, one, out. One man in the backfield is Gordon. Now Mettenberger. Henry's got it out on the left side. And at the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work.
Third down now following the completed pass. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here's Mettenberger. And this complete to Henry over the middle. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. One man in the backfield is Gordon. And he'll get it up the middle. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain and it's second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. Second and ten. He completes it to Henry. Just a one-yard pickup on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. Now with the play clock about to expire, we get a whistle and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. So now on fourth down, on comes Josh Lambeau and the field goal unit for the Chargers. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. This will even nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. 
So it's an empty possession there, and you have to say it's not like him to come up short on a kick like that. Yeah, and it's real easy for me to say this, but anything in the 40 to 49 yard range should be pretty automatic for an NFL kicker, especially in terms of at least getting it there. So you're right. That is a surprise that this will come up short. And out now come the Vikings. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Let's go. Go on, go on. Detroit! Detroit! And the first play of the drive goes to McKinnon. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. A gain of three, second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Second down following the run. They'll come out in the pistol. Here's Hill. And the grab made by the tight end Pruitt. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. Having an effective short passing game, one of their mains concern coming into this one right there, able to hit the D with a quick strike and a first down. And you're able to put that into your game plan when you see that there's space to throw the football. A lot of defenses don't want to play press coverage or tight coverage. They'll play backed off, and sometimes those cornerbacks will bail out really fast and really get deep, and that allows you to throw the quick game underneath, and they took advantage of it. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. They'll look to throw here. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolved, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it, and complete it for a first down. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Hill. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Again, he'll drop to throw. Under pressure, he's going to go down. Look at this, way back around the 43. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Out of the gun now on third down. A bullet throw, but incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time. And that'll bring up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Minnesota defense, we watch them get set to roll. 
And the last time, remember, they forced a field goal try, and it was no good, so it was a big win for them. A huge win for them, because anytime you have an empty possession or you force one, you feel great going off the field, and probably a little chatter towards the kicker, like, hey, nice miss, my man. Let's see if that affects him the rest of the game. And it looks like this will likely be the last play before we hit the two-minute warning. Let's see if they can sneak one more good play in before the two-minute right, signal. start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. Back now. As I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Here's Mettenberger. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. comes Minnesota and they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time which is punting the football but when you look at how teams play the game that complimentary football comes into play how do I take care of my defense how do I take care of my offense well the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out give them a little bit of rest yeah time time for them to give them a rest took the words right out of my mouth So the incomplete pass brings up second down. All right, here we go. Three, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It's a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a third down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. They come out here in the eye. McKinnon. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. shotgun he'll look to throw and it is incomplete the Vikings unable to convert here on fourth and the Charger defense stands tall and they get the football back everyone gears up for third down talks about the importance of it but fourth down that's truly the moment of truth play isn't it everything's dialed up a little bit more and it, you know it's such a momentum play isn't it Absolutely, because it can flip either way depending on who converts on fourth down. And now San Diego getting set to go. One man on the backfield is Gordon. They go back to the air here after the INT. 
Henry's got it out on the left side. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. And it's a gain of 17 that time. And it'll give the Chargers a first down. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. They come out here in the eye. This is Gordon as they go to him again. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. This is Gordon. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. So we have reached halftime. Intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Vikings are down right now, but they have to feel like they're still in it. The Chargers came in prepared for this game, and it shows in the way they've played. All right, let's roll those moving pictures. After the pick, offense comes out now. Run play coming up here, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. They go ahead by a field goal. Yeah, that's perfect. Two Davis.
We got cut off early. We are back and ready for the third quarter. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And there's a flag on the field. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So bad mistake there by the kickers. The ball goes out of bounds. Now Mettenberger. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. They'll get 19 yards there. And the Chargers are going to have a first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. They come out here in the eye. Now Gordon on first down. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it, they're exactly right. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And right side, Henry's got it. And he gets it down to the 32. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll make it third and one. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. He'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers right, to the quarterback, green, green, and complete the play. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
In a 3-4 defense there and against the run, a lot of responsibility can fall on that nose tackle. A ton of responsibility, no pun intended, because they've got to deal with not just the center, both guards, and a lot of times they have to eat up double teams in order to let the rest of the guys get to the football. But how about that play? He not only did he eat up the double team, he ate up the ball carrier as well. I was going to say, talking about puns, you said eat up the double team. One man in the backfield is Gordon. Off as they run the counter play and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. A six yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you stop the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So Keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. And now it's a third and four situation for the Detroit! offense. Detroit! Here we go now. Green, 39. Another toe for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. Call it a four-yard pickup, but it leaves him a few inches short here on fourth down. Here's Josh Lambeau now for the Charger field goal. And Lambeau will put this one through. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. After the made field goal, back out. Lambeau to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. <laughs> and he'll probably wish he reconsidered here. It'll cost him 10 yards now with a new rule as he's down at the 15-yard line. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go. Red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. McKinnon to start the drive. Stays on his feet. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Here's Hill. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read. Better execution and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way. Ran to the football and cause a nice play for lost yardage. Hill. 
This is Johnson. He's got it. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. That was a nicely run slam route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Here's McKinnon. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll set up to throw. And he slings one that's incomplete. Red Allison, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a third down. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Uh, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Given 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. That was a big conversion there on third down. And I remember playing, and all the time on the sidelines, you hear a coach calling for the punt team to get ready on third down because you can't call for it on fourth down. It's too late getting on the field. So a lot of times you're lining up, and the offense can see you lining up. Occasionally it serves as motivation for them. I'm not letting these guys back out here. I want to keep the ball on offense, and that's exactly what they did. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. For the offense lining up first and ten. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Michael Pruitt, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Vikings are able to make this a close game again. Well, that was the fly route for a touchdown, and since he caught that one and scored it, I got to tell the story. Before the game, we were standing there. He was running deep routes, dropped one. It bounced up and just hit me right in the gut, and I said, come on, man, but there there was no drop. Yeah, you okay now? I'm good. All right, I'm good. good. We got the ice pack up here. You're, yeah. you're just fine. What I loved about it was the subtlety of the route because everyone knows he's fast. They're going to play him for that route first and foremost, but sometimes it's a head fake. It's varying your speed off the line of scrimmage. It's giving the defensive back different angles to think about. Is he going inside? Is he going outside? And then, as you noted, he just took off past it. Oops, there he goes again. And 
And so we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. Here now, a look at Melvin Gordon. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles, and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging right, around the scrimmage, three, okay. Three, yeah, in this case. Gordon. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two and it'll be second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. One man on the backfield is Gordon. There's Mettenberger. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. So completion on second down, that brings up third. Now Mettenberger, and that is incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. Here's Drew Kayser now, as he's on to punt for San Diego. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Chargers, their defense heading back out there. Obviously a close game from the defensive standpoint. Maybe don't want to blow it too much out of proportion, but how important is this drive? I think it's huge for them because they've got to find a way to help out their offense, whether it's doing it themselves, taking the ball away and scoring, or setting their offense up in a good position to give them a chance to fully be back in this game. Well, sometimes that defense triggers the offense. We'll see. Try and start this drive in the air. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down.
to throw here. And this is incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Here's Hill. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken at the 23. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now San Diego getting set to go. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Javante Herndon, the intended target. And that'll make it second and ten. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of four. Now third down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Out of the gun now on third down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they will set up shop red zone territory at the 13-yard line. You know, if this is the regular season, Parker, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't turn it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it.
Hill. And the grab made by the tight end, Pruitt. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Extra point try now for Walsh. And that one puts them on top here in the third. And so we have the touchdown now. Here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. Fairly short kick taken at the 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing. And they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of one. In this case, the offense is able to run successfully. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. It's not always as trade as that team wanted it more than the other, but on that play, it actually was true. They were fast to the ball. They come out here in the eye. Here's Mettenberger. Going right side here, and that's complete. That one good for 10 yards. And that is going to set up a third and one. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. Offense just a yard away from the line they need to gain. Third down. seven and they pick up the first and Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree one thing they did learn find open areas find soft spots and set up and catch the ball and I think we just saw that there yeah we saw that indeed picking up the first Thank <laughs> you. 
Now a handoff. This is Gordon. Penalty marker is down here. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. And the dreaded face mask penalty, that's going to cost him 15 yards. And it's such a dangerous play. Body going one way, and then your head gets yanked back the other. 15 yards is the right call. And now a first down following that long gain. Here's Gordon. Gordon loses the football. There he goes left side. And the Vikings pick up the football. 20, 10. And they're going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return. A scoop and score for the Vikings. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Walsh now for the PAT. And with that, the lead is up to eight. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to the...
total as we begin quarter number four. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's going to get taken down inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. Special teams coaches spend a lot of time scheming things up, but this was just a bad return. Now the offense has a long way to go to try to put points on the board. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. They run it here with Gordon. And there's a flag on the play. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Holding offense. Territory. They look to throw, and it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Green, 39. Green, 39. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Right back for Allen. This time he finds him complete. It'll be a gain of nine. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Going underneath for Gordon. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. He went full scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. the 27-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be third down. 
And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Jersey, and sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Here comes the field general leading his off. Fence back out there for the next possession, and those numbers they kind of tell the story of his game so far. Started off not so hot, now he's really heated up. And remember, he signed up for duty as the guy who leads the team, right? The field general, the signal caller. So when things go rocky early, he can't just exit out and ask someone else to pick things up. He's got to do it himself, and that's what he's done here in this game. Side, it's complete. He's got it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 14 there. And it'll be first down Vikings. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Here's Hill. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Johnson was the intended receiver, and it'll be third and ten now. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So a ways to go here on third and ten. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Third down, he'll drop to throw. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And that pickup on the first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Three, 19. Three, 19. 
The offense operating inside the 10 at the 8 here. It's first and goal. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And picked up. It's a foot race. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. Pass the 20. And he takes it back to the house. It's a fumble recovery and a Charger touchdown. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was per perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. The two-point conversion is successful. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. It's a short kick, taken at the 15. And there's a flag on the field. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. to throw here on first down. And the grab made by the tight end Pruitt. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. comes to the line now first and ten they run it with McKinnon looking for a seam but finding none he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it it's a loss of a yard there and now second down I think a lot of people are a little bit surprised there that they ran the draw after that successful pass play previously. But the thought process had to be, maybe we can catch them rushing the passer and hit something big with the running play. side here and it's complete and he's brought down 15 yards there on the catch and run it's a nice completion a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got 
but it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? winding down back to throw now on first down and this is going to be intercepted picked off by the rookie Joshua Perry and his guys will take over at their own 44 yard line well this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes and here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone and this one basically comes right to him And now San Diego getting set to go. They come out here in the eye. Here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Second down, nine yards to go. so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block it. Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. Mettenberger. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Daniil Hunter in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. at the 33 and just a 30 yard punt that time and possession will switch hands first and 10 the chargers defense gearing up to take the field and now big mo's wearing a shirt of their color they're hoping to continue that momentum in their direction but maybe another pick who's big mo he's momentum right momentum <laughs> and right now he's hugging them with a handoff to McKinnon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. 
for so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. an open target and there's a reception the next thing you're looking for the ability to break a tackle and gain additional yardage that's what we just saw An encroachment penalty here, maybe just a mental lapse, partner. Sometimes you have to just watch the football. Make sure it's snapped before you're jumping. Still first down. So first down, five yards to go. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Touchdown. Extra point try now for Walsh. And it's no good. Well, that could be a critical miss here in a one-score game in the fourth. So we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And now San Diego getting set to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. 
Well, any caused incompletion is good for a defense. But when you add to it, you get a little hit on the quarterback, knock him to the ground, make him think a little bit, hopefully knock him off his game, especially in a game of this magnitude, this tight in the fourth quarter. Got to feel pretty good as a defense. Try again with the arm here on second down. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Captain Munderlin. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. And now out comes Minnesota. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy. right to be able to take exactly what happened before replicate it they may have to make a few additional changes along the way because i'm sure the defense will make some adjustments but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out and they'll try the ground game here with the running back and he'll take this one down to the 36. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. The play clock's running down. Here again is McKinnon. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Another pistol look here. Toss play to McKinnon. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, partner, they might want to tear up the scouting reports a little bit here because they just broke tendency. Third down, you don't ordinarily see a toss. <laughs> they ran it, and they ran it really well and picked up the first down. I love the way the edges were sealed, which allowed him to get to the corner. Let's go. And they'll go on the ground. And a cutback right sideline. And he will score. Touchdown. Jarek McKinnon with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so.
And they will line up now for the two-point try. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. They'll try and throw for it. That's caught at the one. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. And so we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. Fairly short kick taken at the 14 here. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out comes the San Diego offense as they get set to see what they can do here. Field is Gordon. He'll get the football here. They find some open. Field here. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. out of that one and it gets him a new set of downs now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense it's just their first they'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter so the offense has it first and ten now out of the gun three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone but these short ones still have their value you can still set up your play action and throw the football you control the clock because the, you have the ball and they don't and often the physicality sets the tempo for the game one man in the backfield is Gordon he's going to get the football and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. And the Vikings are going to beef up their secondary here. Six DBs on third. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. pick up there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks but well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered but how about this guy 
He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. So here we go, first and ten now. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. Second down now after the incompletion. Back to the ground now with Gordon. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. One man on the backfield is Gordon. And they'll give it to him here. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Chargers have made this a one-score game. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert, and then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, it's your, this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes, look at your timeouts, make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted, so many things to go through. And this is back to a five-point game. So a minute and change to go, and this is going to be an onside kick. Penalty marker is down here. And they've got it. They recovered it. Wait, hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Offense. And the onside kick did not go 10 yards. That's illegal, and the flag comes out. And now you know why special teams coaches have gray hair. They draw this up all week. They have it set to go, and the kicker has one job and doesn't get the ball 10 yards downfield. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll be taken down at the 34. And now the Chargers are going to signal for another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second down following the run. That one looks like he'll throw here. And the grab made by the tight end Pruitt. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside.
victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. He lost two there, and it's third down. And Charles, when you pull out a close game, the good thing about that is maybe next time you're in a nail-biter in the fourth quarter, you have a little more confidence. Yeah, you're talking about your memory muscles, right? When you win those close ones, you have that confident feeling that you can continue to do so every time you're in that position. Now, that said, you would rather win by 60 points, or do you like the close ones, too? Well, I think everyone would rather win by 60. It's comfortable. Everyone gets to play. But when you win those nail-biters, dinner tastes just a little bit better that night. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.